<laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the ever was too long. <laughs> However that was to them, but they didn't want to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you end up getting exactly what you want. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hello, Sudi. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you, Pastor. Good, good, good. Good to see you today. How are you? Uh, busy day. <laughs> that seems to be the theme. Yes. Yeah. Think about this. Everybody yesterday had what? Peace all day. We were enjoying the peace. Mm-hmm. Peace don't last long. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Even for me, there was turbulence. <laughs> yeah. But, but, we still turbulence. Hope, but we still hope there'll be plenty of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, this gives us more excitement to say, you know what? Because of this busy day, I want more peace. So mm-hmm. now as I begin to understand how to manage peace within the busy day, the day gets better. Mm-hmm. Because now you begin to change your perception of that day being busy. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Because yeah. at the end of the day, was it a productive day? Yes. Yes. As long as it wasn't waste. And here's the thing. You can waste time. Mm-hmm. When you're waiting for something, waiting time is not wasted time. Oh. Waiting time is not wasted time. Okay? Yeah. So, I'm glad everybody had a busy day. <laughs> not me. You didn't have a busy day? You were the only one to have a busy day? <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, we always think that uh, when it's time for quiet, it means that uh, you're supposed to calm down and, well, now you say meditate, right? In the olden days, it's like... Uh, just calm yourself down and relax and prepare yourself for the next thing that you want to do. That's it. Correct. Correct. And here's the thing. We, just what you said are the five steps. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In essence, you're still doing the five steps within that process. Mm-hmm. That's a different, we're just, again, reiterating it in a different way. <laughs> yes. Because it's just- all the same. Mm-hmm. In the very first lesson that we first taught, one miracle is no different than any other miracle. And one miracle is not harder than another miracle. Yes. And it's, it's the same. That's why we have to keep reiterating is to what? Easy. 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 Creating is easy because you're a design to create. And here's the real secret. You can't stop creating if you wanted to. Impossible. <laughs> Impossible. We, we keep creating, it says that whether it's the negative or the positive, right? Exactly. Correct. And we want more positivity. More positivity, absolutely, absolutely. And that's why we always say rejoice in trouble. Rejoice in tribulation, rejoice in trouble. Everybody points at the trouble and then they get what? More trouble. Because they're pointing at the trouble, but trouble doesn't last long. Only as long as you want it to last. Okay. So when people are in that mindset, it's hard for prayers to get answered and it's hard for healing to take care to take place. You can't point at two things at the same time. Yeah. Mm. Can't serve two masters. You're either gonna love one or hate the other. Can't be wealthy and poor at the same time. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's not going <laughs> And if you are, then that's mismanagement of money. <laughs> Correct. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yes. And a lot of this that we're talking about, it really falls in line with the lesson that we're talking about with being imprinted in the womb. Because remember when you came into the physical body, the mother and the child have so much of a connection that these energies are talking about start there. Did you know that? No. All the energy started there because it's what we call the imprint. Remember, we say the child chooses the parent. So as the child chooses the parent and the parents ask for the conception of the child, 
when the child comes in to that seed, you have that, that life, if you will. At that point, there's an imprint. In other words, between the mother and the child. The mothers always say, oh, mother's intuition. Fathers say, gut intuition. <laughs> saying the same thing. Mm. Because what we're saying is, because of the connection between the mother and the father with the child, same vibration. So there's the imprint on that child vibrationally. That's why you have similarities of their children. Not just in terms of the physical, but in terms of behavior. Even though they're free will to behave how they want, but they observe you and they pick up your behavior first and then they add it on to their characteristics. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on to parents, grandparents, culture, society, environment, school, religion, my own self-believing. So by the time he gets to own self-believing at seven years old, he's already formed his identity. Mm -hmm. At yeah. seven years old, they've already formed their identity. Mm -hmm. Our job is to kind of guide them on the way, but at the end of the day, they can rebel. <laughs> yes. yes. Think about it. A child walks before they can speak, so they can walk away without speaking. Mm -hmm. That's an imprint. But then that's also called free will. Mm -hmm. Child decides, I want to walk out the front door. Parents not paying attention. And all of a sudden, the child is outside, mm -hmm. and the parents not knowing where the child is, and then there's a panic. And then the mother's intuition kicks in, look outside, and then follows the baby trail and then follows the kid and he's seven blocks away and he's safe. <laughs> mother yes. has the GPS to go find the baby. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But yeah. it's the will or the imprint that made him go. Mm -mm. Curiosity. But look at the free will. No knowledge of danger, but adventure, freedom. How do you know to go out the front door? He's seen you do it. <laughs> yeah. How many times did he went out that front door? Using that as an example. Hmm. And that's what they remember. If you look at animals, think about it. As soon as you train the animals how to go in and out of the house, they'll repeat that pattern, won't they? Mm -hmm. Every single time. Let them have dominion over what? All of the earth, including the animals. So now you train them as a pattern, which is all part of the imprint. And this is all vibration that we're talking about. And the same imprint, when you raise your vibration to a place of high vibration, you can't get sick. You can get hurt, but you can't get sick. Do you understand that? Because when you're at such a high vibration, you're joyful, you're at peace, you're not pointing at the problem. So when sickness might come upon you, it don't last long or it doesn't come upon you at all. Mm -hmm. Think about it. You all didn't get sick until you went overseas. You hadn't been sick for how many years? Still not sick. <laughs> See, and you don't claim it, so because you don't claim it, you know, uh, and that's the whole thing with religion and people do the whole name it and claim it thing. Hi, right, Melissa. Hi, I spoke so, God. <laughs> no, people do the name and the claim it, but they don't understand the action behind it. Mm -hmm. Remember, there's three ways that, or three rules to manifesting word, thought, action. Be, do, have. Mm -hmm. Once they understand that process, they begin to raise their vibration. But this, unfortunately, is not imprinted in the room by many. It's not taught. Very few were taught. Mm -hmm. Look at the people that you encounter. Look how they think. Look at the situation. Most people, if they're in lack, all they see is more lack. Mm -hmm. Then they're going to use lackful words. I'm broke. I have no money. I don't make enough money. I ain't got no money. You have all the money. You see my point? So how in the world, with that thinking, are they ever going to create a different reality? 
Where did it come from? It normally comes from mother and father. That's why I used the example yesterday about why people don't leave the ghetto. Yeah. Because of the mindset. But then think about it. The first universe that they experience is what? The womb. That physical dimension or experience is the womb. So from that environment, what are they seeing? What are they born into? Lack. But then if you go on the other side of the spectrum and they're born wealthy, they don't understand what? Poverty. They can't fathom it. Rich people don't understand why poor people are poor and then the smart rich people understand why poor people are poor. Right? Mm -hmm. So the rich will be rich? Yeah. Because they never say, they never say can't, won't, impossible. They will never use those words that will restrict them from getting what they want. They will always say, how can I, ha how can I make this happen? What can I do to make this happen? What's my next plan of action? What's my next step? Totally, completely different. Even the words I'm saying carry different energy, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Completely different energy. Mm -hmm. And because they've trained their minds to not being in fear of failing, which there's no failure, they're just experience. Mm -hmm. Figure, oh, it didn't work, so that's a failure, so I give up. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the young lady who was doing the problem, she didn't give it, so she gave up. Yeah. And the more you explained and gave up on her, she gave up even more. Mm -hmm. So now she had the spirit of what? Giving up. Mm -hmm. So now there's no hope. And because there's no hope, nothing gets in. Now the physical form, but watch this. Where did it start from? Home. Everything started in the house. But then when you helped her heal herself, she took the healing where? Back. She changed the imprint of that vibration that she was born into. She reversed the course. She became the teacher in the house of the parents. So they didn't know how to fix the broken wing mm -hmm. or the broken mind per se. Yeah. She went back and taught them how she worked. Yeah. They told her what was wrong with her. You're not smart. You're like us. We don't understand math. I'm pretty sure if you talk to the parents, they pretty, pretty much said those words. I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they said, we're not good at this. Yes. So if they're saying, I'm not good at this, even from the womb, what is the child saying? I'm not good at this. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's that imprint or that vibration that, that passes on and people grow up in that. And this is why, you remember yesterday we say the struggle? This is why the struggle is so real for people. It's because they carry that imprint from physical birth all the way until they grow up. They've heard it all their times. I can't, I can't. Think about this. The young, however old this young lady is, we don't have to say her age, but think about it. For how many years she's heard that? And then she believed that, and then she created that. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't a good, it wasn't a good experience for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she, she kept saying that she doesn't know how to do this, and she's always apologetic. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, I'm sorry, you know, and, and all those things. Uh, have I disappointed you? And, and all those type of things. She, she, said, she was telling me that I think Sudi is going to hate me. I said, <laughs> it's okay. You just keep learning and you get better, you know? Well, here, here's, here's the, I'm glad, you, I'm glad you said that on her behalf. Look at the love that you gave her and look at the love she was giving back. She was so concerned about disappointing you that she didn't want to disappoint. <laughs> Think about that. Most people who don't care about you don't care about disappointing you. 
Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so she cared very much. Oh. Very much. So I'm sorry. I'm trying. In other words, in her own words of expression, she don't know how to express because all she heard was, "I can't do this." So how in the world is she going to express her feelings? Mm -hmm. So it's easy to say, you know what? I know what I'm sorry for, and I can be apologetic because that is sincere, and that's mm -hmm. satisfying for me. This is the only words I know to express my appreciation and my gratitude. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't want him to hate me because I feel like my parents already hate me because they don't understand me. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yes. You can't fix her. Y'all fix her. Mm -hmm. In so many words. That's why they came to the center. Mm -hmm. So that you could help her get fixed. But you did way more than fix her. You healed her. And you changed that vibration. And now she's much more confident and much more happy and much more self-esteem. So now the words that she was saying in terms of, I'm sorry, was not just self-pity, but more of, I'm really appreciative that you spent the time on me. You valued me and you put value in me more than money could ever buy. Just your presence and your words. Not only that, but watch this. She felt it from your vibration before you even said the words. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Keep doing it. Fifth time. It's okay. Let's do it. You never got angry. You might have got a little tired. Might have got frustrated. Like, okay, why come she's not getting this? Mm -hmm. But you stayed in love at the whole point. And she felt that vibration. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, in effect, changed the hormonal balance within her. Mm -hmm. Wow. Seriously, her appearance got better mm -hmm. without taking medication. Mm -hmm. Or maybe she is, but mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. change the hormonal balance of that person. So the flow of the chemicals in her body, the physiology of that environment changed. Mm -hmm. Oof, that's powerful. So powerful. And you see this countless of times, even with Anson's job, those people who come and they're frantic about what has happened and they feel that energy, they carry that energy. Anson, did you feel that energy in the office when you went into office? Maybe, yes or no? Felt the energy because everybody was on the same conscious level of that thought. So everybody was projecting that vibration of the same thought of almost worry. I don't want to say frantic but or panicky, but the busy was busy where we don't have enough time to take a lunch break. You see my point? We're so tuned in and everybody's in the same vibration where you have to fight that vibration and say, you know what? I can't get caught up in this wave. Each time you do that, you know you change your balance, the hormonal in your own balance of your bodies. Fear, fear physically changes you. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. So all of you are aware of the energy. So when we call you new ascending masters, all we're really saying is you are the masters of controlling energies or vibration. So each place that you go, you're able to raise the vibration or you're able to keep yourself grounded within that. Anson stayed grounded within that vibration that was in the office to the point where he was not consumed. He was able to kind of ride the bumpy wave, if you will. He's a good surfboard rider. <laughs> Are you balancing well? Balance well. <laughs> Nearly drowned too many times. <laughs> <laughs> but as we were saying, he picked up those energy. You picked up those energies from your parents where I'm not going to, I, watch this. You probably hardly ever saw your parents stress out over stuff. Not too much. Well, maybe so, but 
not to the point where it affected the, the household. It didn't affect the children. It didn't affect, you see what I'm saying? Where if there's so much stress in the house, everybody in the house feels the stress, especially the children because they're more sensitive to the energies. Hmm. What, what normally happens if, if we are in a, let's say uh, the kids come back and then they, they, they can feel something is wrong? They will still be go to their rooms. Yeah. They sense that energy just like that. Yeah. And it's, it's, watch what they do. They run from the energy, didn't they? Uh-huh. It was too strong for them because they don't know how to process that energy at their age. Um, but I think that they understand that they need to, they need to, stay away until we adjust ourselves it means the adults need to adjust mm. ourselves and then when it's balanced they will come back up absolutely absolutely and what they were sensing was the dominant energies mm. you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. and that's that's the good thing because that is also part of what we talked about in terms of the weber relationship Without y'all saying anything, they already instinctively knew. Mm -hmm. Sure. And somewhere, they knew it was going to be okay. We did. We drowned before, but we came up swimming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Think or swim is a is a saying on your planet, right? Mm -hmm. So if you think about it. You are a field of energy within 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 a field of energy. In the field of energy and energy. Oh. Think about that. Every place you go is what? Energy. Mm -hmm. Everything moves is what? Energy. Energy or emotion. Emotion technically is what your emotion is really where you get your energy from. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. Energy is where your emotions come from. That's why emotion, energy and motion. Mm -hmm. That's your emotion, energy and motion. That's where you get your word from. Mm -hmm. So you are a field of energy within a field of energy within a field of energy. Think about it. Does the earth hold its own field of energy? Mm -hmm. Yes. Are you part of it? Mm -hmm. Of course. Absolutely. Are you part of the energy of your neighborhood? Yes. yes. Are you part of the energy when it rains? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You're every place you go when it gets hot, are you in that field of energy? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You're always in a field within a field within a field within a field within a field of energy on this planet. Mm -hmm. Always. Your job is to manage the energy. We just call it vibration. That's all. So, when we use the word imprint, it's more a field of energy trans from the mother to the child. And then that's how you got the generational. Generational poverty, generational, I can't do this, generational sickness. Oh, well, they got sick and died at 62, and my grandparents died as sickness at 62. I must go and die at 62 from the same sickness or some similar sickness. And I hear people say that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So those mixtures of energies are what you are all experiencing from the various people that you encounter. Think about it. When we say you're a field of energy, within the field of energy, Anson walked into the office and felt that energy. You felt the energy, watch this, of busy. Mm -hmm. Busy has an energy. Mm -hmm. Peace has an energy. Mm -hmm. All energy. It's just how you manage that energy. You see, mate? So when people don't understand the mixtures of the energies, the mind begins to perceive other things. And normally it's negative. Normally it's not positive. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. On page 210, we're kind of going to jump down a little bit. Um, uh, I 
lot of this stuff you pretty much already know. We've already covered it. Uh, any questions? Imprinting in the womb. Any questions about that part? Anything I need to cover? That's why. That's why they always say that the pregnant mother must be in the best, uh, best state of mind, phys physical mind, spirit, or whatever. So right. they try to do happy things. Correct. Even from the air that's being breathed, mm. more than just the food and the water and the liquids being consumed. Mm -hmm. It has to even be deeper to where the mother has to be in a calm, peaceful state as much as she can at all times. Mm -hmm. And that's probably the hard part. It's hard. It's not easy. It's not easy, but... You have a big watermelon in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of fun is that? <laughs> no rule book. <laughs> The first thing is you look so ugly. <laughs> Thank you, mom. <laughs> now, he's so handsome. <laughs> now he's handsome. We're all, we all come out looking like aliens. <laughs> <laughs> but think about this. Everybody forgot when they came in. Here's what happens on the planet. If you look at on page 210, it says, for the vast majority of you reading or hearing this lesson, that dissension, the quantum leap from the realm of pure spirit from a different vibrational state into a vibrational state on the third dimension was a shock. So much of your awareness, you forgot yourself as pure spirit. Mm. Everybody forgot because it was a shock. Mm. You don't remember. Now, if the shock and conception is not sufficient, it could happen anytime during being in the womb, if there's any kind of trauma for the mother, if there's a physical, physiological imbalance, if the breathing experience is difficult, if there's any problem with the flow of nutrients to the body, if the mother is under even occasional acute emotional stress, then you'll make an attempt to pull back away from the body and attempt to rediscover the realm of spirit. So when babies die, they've completed their mission, but they are so much in shock they feel it from the parents. Mm. So that's why they have sudden baby death syndrome. I think that's what they call it, something like that. Mm -hmm. They're still yeah. trying to figure out by means of science. But uh, the spiritual reasoning behind it. Mm. That's, so when you do this, the body of the fetus goes numb. That is life force is withdrawn. As it grows, the nervous system adapts to the level of life force that flows through it, and it becomes from another. So that during this period of nine months, you're in a particular universe where you have physical experience, not un unlike one who is 61, 60 years old in a physical dimension. You experience the sensory realm of the third dimensionality, and you're already being deeply influenced by psychic patterns, not your own. So in other words, what we're saying is that baby is so sensitive. It's like a, re it's like a, a receiver. It picks up everything. 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 That's why it's so important to keep the vibration high. Because if not, when they get 60, you wonder why people are in their 60s and 70s still doing the same thing. And they never work for them. They're always poor. They die poor, they die sickly, or they die whatever. They carry that imprint from, from time of birth. Some have changed it, absolutely, and went back. But they had to have influences like yourselves. Each one of you influenced your busyness today. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. And as you did that, you changed the environment. Tomorrow won't be as busy. Tomorrow will be more of a f within the flow with a with a few small speed bumps, mm. but not like this. <laughs> mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Questions, comments, concerns.
I, I think most of the time you say when the baby come to the earth, uh -huh. uh, he forgets that he's spiritual. Absolutely. We forget, right? Because we are constantly being reminded that, hey, there's gravity, you shouldn't, you'll fall down, you'll hurt yourself, don't do this, don't touch that, not Correct. too hot, not too cold, not too fast, not too slow. Correct, absolutely. And we don't teach the children intuition because we don't learn and trust our own intuition. Yes. Intuition is the ear to the soul. If you really think about it. And the soul is the only instrument sense enough, sensitive enough to pick it up. Only the soul can pick up that vibration. You can't hear it if you think about it. So it's so sensitive that it will even pick up life's famous vibration. You feel these energies, the most subtlest ones. Early in the morning, when it's really, really quiet and peaceful, and there's hardly no noise at all, what will you hear? I hear myself speaking. Hear yourself speaking? Yeah. Some people hear buzzing in the ear, which is also another form of so a better word that you'll understand, that's heaven that you're hearing. Mm. Some people think tendonitis, they'll go to the doctor. Some of it is for some people, but majority of them that are very in tune with themselves and they are aware of it and hear it, mm. that's not a medical issue. That's them aware, being aware of themselves and hearing the other side of the veil. Heaven. Oh. Literally, you hear heaven, and if you ask it, if you ask the tone or the buzz or whatever you want to define it to get louder, it'll actually get louder. Uh, you can tell it it's too loud, go go too loud or tell it to get softer, it'll get soft. You can even tell it to stop. It, it seems like, yeah, sometimes can control, like mm -hmm. without knowing, like I say, hey, it's very noisy in here and then it will go down. <laughs> and it'll stop. But that noise, that vibration is heaven. If you listen, if you, if you meditate and go into that tone, go into that tone like when we did God. If you do it just like that tone, oh man, you are going to experience some things so awesome. Seriously. And, and I thought that there's something wrong with my ear or whatever. These are downloads and upgrades is the best way we can describe it. And you get it through your central sun. Everybody yeah. in the whole planet. <laughs> Everybody's getting it that some are aware and some are not. Here's, here's how you know this to be true in a lot of ways. Religion is changing. People changing as you see it in this day and age. Mm -hmm. there, there are a lot of people learning new stuff and they didn't know that it was previously religious. Mm -hmm. We're talking about mindfulness. Mm -hmm. And then some parents were saying, but that's, that, 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 that is Buddhist. And I said, yeah, so is yoga. <gasps> so is Christianity. So is all of it. All of it came from it, but people boxed themselves in because of, again, it being imprinted in the womb from birth. Mm -hmm. I'm believing, so because I'm believing this way, it's going to go, that vibration of believing goes into the child. Mm -hmm. It comes out, now I'm going to teach you my way because this is the only way that has ever worked for me. Mm -hmm. and, then, okay. and then you see that cycle. And then when the child doesn't do what the parents do, and then there's a split, oh, we disown you now. Oh, you brought dishonor to the family. Mm -hmm. And then there's a shunning and no separation of, okay, let him be a free spirit to discover himself because there's some newness there. 
It's like us old people still learning the new technology where you give the children three years old a phone and they'll figure that thing out faster than all of them. Yeah, without you know anything, your, your bill goes up to $200. <laughs> yeah, it's like they're programmed in their little fingers in their mind. We're like still trying to find a setting button and where's yeah. the volume button and too many applications and I got to swipe left, swipe right too much. <laughs> I, I, there was one time where Sudi got me a new phone, right? And I was at the airport. And then he was calling us. I, I don't even know how to ask. Auntie, <laughs> <laughs> auntie, sweat up. <laughs> see? Don't know how to, see? But you get, the, you get the young ones, bless them. They know all of it. Mm. Because that is their world and that's the reality and that's going to be the new future because again they're taking it to the next level mm -hmm. you have to have chaos to have what order mm -hmm. so you have to disrupt some things that people might not like or might not hear or might like see or might not want to experience but it's for the embedment of the whole planet mm -hmm. and why this learning of this is so important because now you know where it comes from and why people struggle. So if people are struggling, whatever their definition of struggling is or however you see them struggling, you understand, well, this is from the imprint that was from birth. Mm. Some say, oh, no, I came from a good, happy home, but there was somewhere in there that they learned it. It was developed, it was practiced. It became a habit and then it became them. And that's all they knew. Mm. Yes. Didn't that. So all these years, like I told you six months ago, got a hard D plus in, in, in statistics one. And I was so happy. Yay! Because all my life I heard math is hard. Math is hard. Y'all even heard me go, this is so hard. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so, so, um, you see, the Eastern culture is such that the, the parents have to really uh, control the, the children. You know, they, they do the planning even all the way until their marriage, etc. You know, mm -hmm. so, so is that control thing? Um, but the, the over control is going to, you know, their, their intuition, like just now we were mentioning, they, they don't have the independence of, on everything so how how to balance that but if we see some of the western culture is they are too free that that the kids make the wrong choices correct you know? so and how 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 to balance that if in in this modern world well the way the way you balance it honestly first of all is don't point at it yeah. and it's hard it, it's hard not to point at it when you're seeing it yeah especially if you know how to help them fix it. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to break habits. That's why I say you can't change the world, you can't change people, but you can only influence. Mm -hmm. So your job as a creator is to find the best way to influence them. And when we say influence, part of influence is planting the seed. Mm -hmm. That's it. Influence, plant, and seed. And if consider yourself the seed. Mm. 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 So, yeah, that, that means we have to be the good seed. We have to be the example too, right? Absolutely. We are the, the, the big tree, and then we are showing the, the little seeds on the ground, you know, how, how to grow strong and grow straight. Absolutely. But watch this. I'm glad you brought up the tree. We're going to give you an analogy of the tree. Watch this. We're gonna say, we're gonna call hypothetically, tree is problems. Mm -hmm. We're gonna say the tree is a problem. Now, what supports the tree? Roots. The roots. Roots. The, yeah. From the roots, what does it do for the tree? Well, if I got bad roots, what does it do to the leaves? What does it do to the fruit? Mm. It affects everything. But watch this. Nobody points to the root of the tree. They point at the leaves. Mm. Because the roots is hidden. You cannot see that. <laughs> oh. exactly. 
okay. Sometimes, uh, no, most of the time, uh, the the source of the problem is is difficult to explain. Right. And it's also um, it's also um, we 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 do uh, not many people can see the the roots of the problem. Right. So that's why, uh, like you say, you're only pointing at the leaves or right. pointing at the fruit. And our job, our job is to best way influence them to point at the root because if they can point at the root of the problem then they don't have to worry about the what? Leaf. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The leaf is the effects only. That's it. Yeah. You have to go to the root of the problem. And nobody wants to point. And here's, the, let me be honest. Everybody knows what the real problem is. They just don't want to take ownership of it. They, yeah. don't want to take it because they really don't. Yeah. How many times have you gave people advice and they go, yeah, I know, but... <laughs> So the root of the problem is the parents. <laughs> a lot of times, yes. <laughs> and the parents will not want to take admit. <laughs> parents don't become good parents until they get in their mid thirties. <laughs> no, over here in Canada, even the old ones, they are. They're still not good. <laughs> to me, they're not up to standard. Yeah. Don't point at them. But because everybody has a different experience that they must learn on why they came in. Remember, when you see people struggle, they have to, they wanted that struggle. Pastor, I didn't want this struggle. Yes, you did. How, how would you not know peace without struggle? <clears throat> how would you know what it even looks like or feels like? How would you know it? But we will always give them the benefit of the doubt that they are doing their best at their position. Absolutely. So now we know the whole story, right? So we're gonna say, okay, you try your best, but now try it my way. Do it my way. And she'll go like, okay, you take over. Absolutely. And desperate people will do desperate things, won't they? Mm -hmm. yeah. And they if you say, Hey, won't you try it this way or try it this way or try it this way, this way didn't quite work for you, so try something different. But here's the real secret. Your spirit will connect with their spirit and you will find the right words to say to them at the right time. Mm -hmm. I know. Every time I say something, the, 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 most of the mom will like so touch and say, oh, this is what I want. Oh, yeah. like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but they feel that love because you are helping them awake. So when Melissa asked the question of the parents and even also the children, because it starts with the parents and leads to the children, but now you have the trifecta, forefecta of, of everything in the house. So now you have to heal everybody in the house. It has to start with some new seed being planted in the house. So when you, when Anson planted the new seed in the angry man, he was no longer angry. When you influence the young lady over, now watch this. Did it happen overnight? No. So, to answer your question, Melissa, we have to continue and continue and continue because, again, back to what we were saying, you're always forever in that field of energy. Always, 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 always. Yeah. So, your job is to manage your energy and influence their energy because you can't change them. They're free spirits. They have to, they have to see you living it and it working for you. Because mm. you can tell fake religious people from real religious people. Real religious people, it works for them, doesn't it? Mm. Fake. They always got to try something new. They always got to find a different God. They always got to find a different, and it never works for them. That's why they're always bouncing around, bouncing around, bouncing around, bouncing around. They'll find forever and they'll never find one. The right one. They'll always be forever the seekers because they don't have faith in what they're seeking. They don't believe in what they're seeking. Oh. 
Okay. So they actually seek what they're getting. Mm -hmm. oh. Nothing from nothing equals what? Not nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nothing and nothing is still big nothing. Yeah. It's a big nothing. And they keep producing what? Nothing. Mm -hmm. But then when you tell them, try it my way, you're going to get what? Resistance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why, why I got to do it your way? Who are you? What right. makes you special? And in their heart, they really want to follow your way, but they want to give you credit, and they don't want you to teach them. Right. You know, they need to be taught. So they'll secretly watch you, and they'll secretly ask you certain questions. Well, what about this? Well, what do you think about that? They're trying to throw the, 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 the line out Fishing, yeah. Yeah, yeah fishing. Uh, without exposing themselves as the bait. Mm -hmm. They're throwing the line not realizing they're the bait. <laughs> <laughs> it's the resistance. It's the resistance. Here's why it's the resistance. They don't like change. They don't like change. And then the other one is nobody wants to be told what to do. Correct. Correct. It's it's their arrogance also. They will say things like, oh, I've been through all this that you, you were doing before, you know? I've heard so many people say, well, I tried it your way, it didn't work. Yeah. I right, said, so, well, how long did you try it? <laughs> Once. <laughs> yeah. No, nothing. But but they it, don't know whether that is, that is really going to work or not. Right. And they're, they continue to be seekers. Yeah. And and seekers and they never find what they're seeking. Mm -hmm. Then when they see you and I creating and flowing so easily, they reject it. Because mm -hmm. nobody wants to go back and say, you know what, maybe I was wrong about what, what you're doing. Maybe I need to try. Nobody wants to say I'm sorry. Few people want to say I'm sorry. Yeah. Nobody really wants to say I got it wrong. Mm -hmm. I made a mistake or Maybe I misunderstood it, or however they want to clean it up. They never want to do that. So it's easy, it's easy to point the finger at something outside of themselves other than themselves. Go ahead. What were you saying? So, so what, what if uh, we think wrong, right? I mean, we have a, a not negative, but it's just a, a wrong thinking, you know? How we can delete that? I mean, can I we say, oh, cancel, cancel, don't, uh, or change your thought immediately? They thought over it. Yeah, change your thought. Because here's the good thing about it: you are aware that you're thinking that thought. So once you become aware that you're thinking that thought, change it to a what? Satisfying thought. Yeah. You're the only one that can create a satisfying memory that is satisfying to you. Some people find walking in the grass satisfying. Some people find drinking coffee satisfying. Some people like curry satisfying. Some people find, you know what I'm saying? There's whatever memory is satisfying, you have to go to that memory, but also say, you know what? I'm happy I'm in this trouble. I'm happy I'm in this trouble. For, for example, for example, you saw an accident and you say, oh, accident, a very bad accident. And then what you got to think? But you cannot cancel that. So you say, no, everybody's safe. Safe on the road. Everybody is safe. And then get to a destination. Blah, 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 blah. So go the positive way. Absolutely. Just bless it. Mm -hmm. I bless, I bless all this involved. That is the simplest way. Because if there's an accident and there's a transformation of deceasing, that is their contract. Mm -hmm. they their mission. And unless God says, okay, Sudi or Lily, go raise him from the dead, if you don't have that intuition, it's not no, it's just, no, no, it's not our and job. The love, and then the, the, you know, big trouble becomes smaller to the minimum and then help them, you know, move on and everybody is safe on the road. <laughs> right, absolutely. And that's why we pray for the traveling grace. Every time you get in your car or when you wake up, you should always pray for your 
traveling grace and your hedge of protection around you. Mm -hmm. when you your hedge of protection, that means all your angels, all your guides, all your ancestors, all your protectors, all the high evolved beings that are assisting and guiding you, they're around you. And there is not a number that you cannot think of that will not come to assist you. Okay. You ask for 12,000 angels to help you, you'll get it. Well. Um, two days ago, I asked for one and he didn't show up, but he sent me something to read. I was like, oh, okay. Well, then he showed up. Um, he showed you what to read. Yeah, he showed me what to read. So you answered. You answered what he what he gave you the he you answered the he answered your question. Yes. So you were looking you were looking for something else, and he gave you what you need. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure what I was looking at, but I was thinking like, yeah, I need some guidelines. Come on. Right. You know? Well, in, in just call his name, and then and then later on, I found something online and then it was like related to him as well so I, uh -huh. so I the web of relationship mm -hmm. you follow the five steps you asked it was answered you believe you received and you got the manifestation of it yes and uh that's that becomes my assignment <laughs> <laughs> you're a deliberate creator yeah i think things are coming very instantly right now here's what's happening to all of you how many how many senses do you all have six huh five or six six how many six how many senses who says six how many senses? Six. Six. six oh what is your sixth sense mind knowing intuition knowing oh. Knowing is your sense. Knowing is your sense. Your sixth sense. Knowing in what sense? Like our, we have our own mind and to 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 think. Is that it? You yeah, your own knowing. Okay. So, in other words, when we say that, your intuition is your knowing. Mm -hmm. Y'all just using different words. You're using the same. You're using the word to describe the same thing. Intuition is your sixth sense, which is still your knowing. That makes sense? It's that little voice that you come to learn to trust. Don't go left. Something's gonna happen. I feel the vibration in the office this morning before I even get there. Feel that buzz, that little voice, that little in instinct. But we can, we can change that, right? By reimagining a good thing so we can change that uh, I mean we can influence you listen to it you listen to it and then you work with it because that is your GPS that is your warning signal so you don't want to if you're getting a signal don't go down there if you ever get that feeling I shouldn't go there I shouldn't go there I shouldn't go there and then you go there and you go I should have listened to my voice and when I went there, and then you're regretting. You know what I'm saying? So you have to trust that voice of when it says, don't go left. Trust that voice. That's your knowing. When you know to trust that voice, you know not to go left. And then all of a sudden, you'll get a report of why you shouldn't go left. Mm, like you said, I was driving. I was driving pretty fast. And suddenly I have a feeling slow down. Mm -hmm. And there was a cop with a gun. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> That's your knowing because you trusted the voice. How many people got tickets that day? <laughs> I saw Nancy. No, no, Pastor, what I'm saying is that if you have the feeling that, okay, I'm going to meet this person, it's not going to be pleasant, or the person is going to be. Hello, hello. I think we lost her. Yeah. Oh, that's like the eight o'clock syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be every back day, every day. I think. Uh, 
It might be my connection. I don't know. No, well, you seem to be okay on my end, so I don't think it's it's you. Okay, then it's Melissa. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always her house. <laughs> she need better better modem. No, she needs a better home. Better home. <laughs> home. We're sending PRA. She's already got it. Yep. She's already got it. Yeah. So, Pastor, just a quick one. Yes. I guess I'm, I'm asking similar question of what um, Aunt Mel has in mind and because I have it in the same way as well. Um, ever since I got that uh, negative email from the contractor, the one that I told you before, my mindset then has just been rampaging to a point where I'm like, I got to find a way to solve this. This is not going to be a fun day and wherever it is. And sure enough, it wasn't, right? But it's a good thing that I caught myself saying that. And I told myself, like, I got to change this. Like, I'm going to tell myself instead of it being really, really hard for that day, I'm just going to tell, like how all of us have been saying, it's going to be easy. Amazing. But I felt at the same time when I started thinking that, I, I should have done that many, many hours ago when I started my day at work. Yeah. So, and what happened was when you read the email, mm -hmm. you, that email carried vibration. You felt the energy of it. Yeah. So you responded to that vibration. And then somewhere in your life experience, you experienced that and went, this is going to be hard. This is going to be one of those rough days, or this is going to be something that I'm familiar with from my past. And but like you said, you caught it. But unfortunately, here's the the again, eight seconds to create that. Eight seconds to create that thought. Once you read the whole email, if it's longer than 16 seconds, you gotta write that out. And once you wrote it out, but the good thing about it is once you, once you can't store the energy, you can only change it. So what you did was you wrote it out until you said, you know what, I can't, I'm not going to take this. So then all of a sudden it gets a little bit easier, a little bit easier, a little bit easier, a little bit easier. And you still have, it's still a struggle within a day, but not as much as it could have been. Mm. Because you're not still going back to the email all day long, even though, it's important, and we're not saying don't ignore it, but it's how you perceive what you're wanting okay. and what you're feeling. Does that make sense? And you were able to catch it and say, you know what, I don't want to feel this anymore and change it where when it gets toward the end of the day, the end of the day feels much lighter. But now watch this. You feel it physically in your body. Tired. And you're ready to go to sleep. And as you go to sleep, you just keep releasing that energy. So, you know what? That was a great day. I'm glad I experienced that. I'm so glad that I created something positive out of something that could have been negative. And I'm glad. And then you add some more to it. I'm glad I helped the other person next to me and the next cubicle and the people around me. And those who are all involved in this project, including the contractor. And I pray that he has a great day. And, you know, you release that as you, as you say your prayer or however you release your day. And then you say, tomorrow's just going to be an awesome day, regardless of what's going to happen. I'm going to be the best day ever. And we're going to complete it with deadlines above expectations. So to say, end your day in a high spirit. Absolutely. Okay. I come in this day in God, with God, for God, and by God. I live this day in God. You have to live that. You have to close this day in God, with God, for God, and by God, and then declare how you want it? What I do each night is I release and forgive this day. It has been a perfect day. And it is so. That's how I end my day. And of course, I always bless everyone by name as much as I can remember. But I always, always, I, I forgive and release this day. It has been perfect. And so it is. Just something simple. Because I can't handle too much. To <laughs> mm -hmm. Melissa, what were you saying before you dropped off? Yeah, so um, <laughs> uh, our internet was a bit spotty. Um, <laughs> you, you know, like, you know that the, uh, the, the meeting or the person that you're going to meet is not going to be pleasant, you know, or you got that, that feeling. Maybe 
because these days I can feel that I don't know why I can feel about people's uh, mind. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, so if 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 that such thing, I mean, so far it has been pleasant. Uh, but if we feel that oh, if um, the meeting that I'm going to go or uh, this person is not going to be, uh, you know, friendly, can uh, we? Can we change that? I mean, we prepare the meeting. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. You know how? You know how? By sending love, is it? Sending love. And then also, what can you do for yourself for that meeting? Be in love. Be in love. Find as much as you can love in that meeting and the people involved in that meeting. That's the best way to influence that whole thing. And then pray for that person. Pray so for that. You, yourself, you yourself also have the, the need to love that particular thing too. Not fake it till you make it. Not, I'm going to love him because I want him to treat me right, but I love him because he is part of my soul family and he's here to teach me something or they're there to teach me something. Each person who gives you a hard time is there to teach you a lesson. Mm. The law of attraction said you drew them to you to learn something, not to fix them. They got to fix themselves. I, I also think that when some people, when there's somebody who is coming to give you trouble, mm -hmm. firstly, and love. Secondly, you say, I know you need help. Absolutely. So let me help you. And I can only help you when you're nice. <laughs> and they're going to get they, mean. They, they become softer. Oh, good. Well, you have a way of doing that. When I tell them that, they get meaner. <laughs> <laughs> so I stop telling them that. <laughs> so how how to how to make the person that you're gonna meet to do what you want the person? Well, you can't make them do anything, but you can only make yourself not focus on that person's negativity. You cannot focus on that person's negative behavior. Even though they're going to act that way, you cannot let that person affect you. And I know it's hard because that's a hard energy. So you have to find something loving about that person. Start small. He got nice shoes. <laughs> His mm. breath smells good. Mm. They woke up today. They're not dead. Mm. Some, find something to work within that parameter. Because if not, you'll go in the meeting going, I want them to change. I want them to change. And they'll be the biggest, you know, whatever. <laughs> so this is like um, um, focusing on their positive points. You have to find what something positive on that person. Like for me, while well, she's a good mom, she's trying to think of the best for her child. Yeah. And she's doing her best. And so send her love just for that. And then the mom keeps sending, keeps sending. And then he said, Oh, I know you can be nice. <laughs> and I will give you all help. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And here's here's another another tip that you can use. When people are unreasonable and disrespectful or mean or whatever, merely ask Holy Spirit what you can do and say in that moment to soothe their broken hearts. Mm. The person who's even though you call them to them, they're broken hearted. You have to really look deep and say, you know what? They're hurt. This is why they're acting that way. Mm. You taking it personal, but they're hurt for whatever reason. You just happen to be on the other end of the product. So now, what did you learn from it? Easy to point at what they're doing. What did you learn about yourself from them? And if you didn't learn love, you didn't learn patience, you didn't learn how to change the energy of what they're saying when they're mean to you, what words can you do to counteract that word? Every word has a counter word. The whole planet is a word planet. Am I right? Mm. So everything that we're talking about is word energy. Dominate and, word energy. Go ahead. And also sometimes if you don't know what to say, just, just 
think in yourself. They said, you know, give me the clarity so that I can help this person. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Of the clarity so that you you know how to communicate with this person because you really want to help him question can each of you see per people who are unreasonable as god i i see him as something bright you know <laughs> like a buddha so bright so bright practice that right. look at that person as god because at the end they are what god yeah they are it's just a bit uglier. We don't see them being God. We see them being ugly, don't we? we see them not being God, but devils and demons. Mm. It's, and it says that devils, when they learn to be good, they become angel too. No such thing. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. It doesn't work that way, unfortunately. Remember, there are. Archons and Aeons, those are the demons that are controlling this planet. That's it. There's no devil. Oh, okay. The Aeons and Aeons are the only ones that control your nervous system. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> call back. Does that make sense? Yes. And when we talk about the imprint, remember when the child develops fully, Fear goes into the nervous system. Mm. That's where that imprint comes from. So when these people are that way, it comes from that wound. It comes from something they picked up that was hurtful that they harbor. Mm. So they took that energy. Here's another practice. Try to meet that person in the spirit. What does that mean? When I'm laying down, I try to see the best like. Lily said, I try to see the Buddha or the enlightenment or the God in them or something the best positive in them mm. and talk to them. Hey, I know you didn't mean to hurt my feelings and I'm not offended that you hurt my feelings because I'm unoffendable and we're all love on this side of the veil. Okay. <laughs> Which is true. You but know, <laughs> you, you know, when you talk to somebody with, uh, in spirit, isn't it that you, in your mind, you imagine that person. Yes, and and, and not only thoughts? that, feel the energy. Huh? Feel the energy. Feel it as if it was so real. You know, ah. I have been, I have been, I have been sending love and uh, talking to uh, the the, the woman, the woman that, huh? Do you feel it though? I know you're sending it to her, but do you feel, did you really love that woman? I, I feel, I feel that she's still bitter. No, 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 wrong question, no wrong. Do you feel you love her? With yeah, because, because I'm, uh, yes, uh, I'm working with her. I'm, I'm, I'm just looking for. How much, how much do you love her? Not yet. You got no, no, wait a minute. When you say you love, when you love somebody, you are thinking for their own good, right? No, I want you to love them like you love your children. Love them like you love yourself. Oh, not like that. Yeah, like that. Because if you don't, you're that's separation. And as long as you see separation, you see judgment. And as long as you see judgment, then there's fear. There's resistance. And you still get the unruly, unreasonable person because your perception of them have not changed. You're still pointing at their flaws, wanting to be good. But yeah. when we say you love them, you have to define whatever. Remember, everybody has their own definition of what love is. See, we found out that's a definition of a love. When, we say I, when I say I love you, I love you like I love my wife, my children, my mother, my father. I love you the same way. Why does there have to be a difference in the love? Why? Who says, who made the rule that there had to be a difference in the love? Do you, do you have, how many of y'all have best friends? How many of you love your best friends like you love your, how many of you love your best friends like you love your parents or your? Oh no, that's different. There's no difference. Why love is different. Get the green love is unconditional. Haven't I taught you that? <laughs> Okay. Love, love, love. Love. There's no condition. 
Oh, so now you know my love has different levels. Yeah. Don't get to unconditional love and you won't have a love level. Yeah, okay, if unconditional <laughs> Because think about it. You would, you, your best friend, you love them. It's just this, it's just a different person you're emitting the vibration to. That's all. No different. Love is love is love is love. I don't care how you define it. You still have that emotional connection to that person. Trust them with all that you have. Without shadow of a doubt, they can come into your home. All of that. You love them where if they were to die, it would break your heart. If not, and we don't wish this on anybody. It's not your time. But if a mother loses a child, look at that. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? No different if I lose my best friend, the hurt is still the same. Mm -hmm. The loss is still the same. Mm -hmm. So when you practice unconditional love, that's why people say, oh, we got these different levels of love. And then that's why they're all confused because they got different levels of love. Uh -huh. People are confused because they got too many levels of love. Too many levels of love. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, I can't love them like I love my wife. I can't love them like I love my parents. That's a different relationship. We were not born into the same family, so I have to identify love in a different way now. Mm. How many of y'all love your neighbor? How many masters said love your neighbors? Every, every master said do what? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Yeah. Every master said that. So you have to love everything your neighbor does. That means if they want one side of the fence to be blue and you want the other side red, you got to compromise. <laughs> you see what we mean by love? Mm -hmm. So when we say love, everybody starts saying, oh, I got this type of love for this person. We say have one love. <laughs> Makes it easier for me. If I love you all the same, I love you all the same. I love the narcissist just as much as I love the racists. I love the terrorists. I love the, why not? They're all hurting, aren't they? Mm -hmm. They're yes. all expressing a form of hurt. Mm -hmm. Some call it mental issue, whatever it is. It's still a form of hurt. It's something that was picked up from the imprint and they carried it out and it became the reality. And because you got in that path, because you're wanting to experience that person and to help them raise their awareness to be better people, they were put in your path. Your job is to figure out the solution to that puzzle because every puzzle is different. Okay. That makes sense? Yes. So practice. Why do you think we practice for 30 days? Unconditional love. So you can only have one love. <laughs> I think it's not 30 days. We're still practicing. <laughs> well, well, we'll do it again. But I wanted to let it sink in because I wanted it to be a practice where every day you go in and try to love as much as you can. Yeah. Uh, it's not perfect yet. <laughs> Did we ever say that was easy? No. <laughs> no, we didn't. We never said that was easy. Mm. That one is one where you, it takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Because what we were all taught and what we, were, what we all created in terms of what we thought love is. If you look at teenagers and they're madly in love, look at them 30 years later. Different love, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> But it's still the connection from the beginning. You can see people have been together for 60 years and they still are in the same love as they were when they first met. And then when they die, one will die. And then within an hour or so, the next one will die. Mm -hmm. Unconditional love. They didn't see fault in that other person. They worked through it. Instead of two year mark, I'm out of here. Get the divorce. Split the house, split the car, split the kids. 
And that's what you see. Because people fall, fall out of love. So you can fall in love and you can fall out of love. Mm -hmm. But think about this. Love is still a what? Energy. Mm -hmm. If I were to say, what is love? What would you say? God. Yeah. God is what? Love. 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 So everything you should look at is God is love. Everything that I see is good, holy, and beautiful. Even the person who's unreasonable is good, holy, and beautiful. Their soul, at the end of the day, whether you like it or not, is good, holy, and beautiful, and is pure, loving spirit. They're just going through an experience, and you're part of the experience. The experience is to learn about yourself and to help influence that person to wake up. Help them heal and help you get healed from, think about it. If they're unruly, you feel that energy, don't you? You feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. in your body. So that means you need something to heal from in, within yourself. Because we say you should not have fear. For God did not give you fear, but the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Every master has said that. God never gave you fear. Fear was created by man. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yeah. Yes. Anything else? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> love you all. Love you all. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.